Can Lloyd Cushenberry put together his best season yet as a Denver Bronco? We focus on the Broncos' interior offensive line in our Broncos camp preview. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for rocking with us, making us your first listen of the day every single day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news, content, coverage, analysis, and more. You get that every single day, all year Long. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. This episode of Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit, same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply Sarah my friend hey look training camp it is here this week everything kicks off Friday will be open to fans and I know everybody in Broncos country is excited but we have to set the table for two more positions today we're going to focus on the interior offensive line tomorrow the defensive line on the interior for the Denver Broncos and when you look at the interior of this O-line there's so many questions coming into the season like can Lloyd Cushingberry put together his best season yet does he have any competition behind him how will new additions fit in the interior is very, very exciting to talk about here. So obviously a big addition at the left guard position this offseason, one of the Broncos' biggest free agents, right? Ben Powers coming in from the Baltimore Ravens where he pitched a shutout last year in terms of sacks allowed, barely allowing any pressures there from that left guard position and, of course, playing for one of the NFL's best running teams. But like you mentioned, a little bit of question around Lloyd Cushenberry at the center spot. And then maybe one of the Broncos' best old linemen since he's been drafted in 2021, Quinn Miners at the right guard spot. But I think where people maybe have the most questions right now, Cody, it's it's two things. Number one, what's going to end up happening at center? Is it going to be Cushenberry or is somebody else going to step up and take that position from him? And then what does the depth on the interior offensive line look like? We talked about this with the offensive tackles that Sean Payton typically keeps eight guys or has typically kept eight guys on his offensive lines through the years. So let's just take a look at who those candidates could be. Obviously, at the center position, we have Alex Forsythe, the seventh round pick out of Oregon. Then the Broncos did sign Kyle Fuller. No, not that Kyle Fuller, the other Kyle Fuller, which apparently there is one. I had no idea until he was signed by the Broncos, but a former Seattle Seahawks player who did play with Russell Wilson there. Luke Wattenberg, a fifth round pick in the 2022 NFL draft. who can play some center, some guard, played some tackle even in college. And you've got guys like Henry Burton, undrafted free agent. Will Sherman, a guy the Broncos picked up last year off the, uh, of the free agent scrap heap and put him on the practice squad. Some swing options, guys that we talked about in the tackle episode as well. Quinn Bailey, who I think, and I think you agree with me, Cody, he's played a little better at guard than he did when he was given opportunities at tackle. And Cam Fleming, who has played guard as well as tackle in his NFL career. It's a lot of guys, but really, I think what the Broncos lack is maybe proven depth at these position groups. So, where do you kind of stand, Cody, as this overall position group right now as we head into training camp? Yeah, that's a great question. And and look, you make some very good points. You know, Denver has numbers at these positions, but like other positions that we've talked about, like edge rusher, even some young guys at corner, they have some unproven guys, guys with not a lot of sample size in regular season games. And I, I think these are some things to monitor here. If Sean Payton is, in fact, going to look at keeping eight offensive linemen, we already know the five that are going to be there for the Broncos on the starting offensive line. So what are the traits and characteristics that these guys need to have to be able to make those final three spots in terms of depth? And look, I think you nailed it here. I think it's those swing options that give you the best value because if you have a guy who can play guard and can play tackle, or if you have a guy that can play guard and center, I mean, Sarah, those are two roster spots that you can get to essentially equate to 
two other positions or maybe even four in terms of depth. Can this can these swing options, can they play right side? Can they play left side? And if they can do that, they have a clear advantage, not to mention you can add some of these players to the practice squad, you know, keeping an eye on Princeton Henry Bird. I mean, obviously being one of those guys here for the Broncos, you know, those Princeton guys are very, very smart. They understand, you know, everything it takes to get into obviously a big school like that, to be able to play at an Ivy League school is huge. So how can that translate into the NFL practice squad? I think is a great place unless there's a guy who just comes out and makes some noise. But I think we always talk about it, Sarah. What is the most valuable thing you can have in the National Football League today from an offensive line standpoint, positional versatility, someone who can play this or can play that. Think about last year, for example, some clear instances when there was an injury, when Quinn Miners got banged up or, you know, Lloyd Cushenberry got banged up. We saw Graham Glasgow play some guard. We saw him play some center last year. We saw Cam Fleming at one point even played some guard a little bit when the Broncos had an injury to the tackle position. I think it was, they had him at guard in one, one situation Billy Turner at tackle and Calvin Anderson at left tackle in place of Garrett Bowles. You need guys that could do a little bit of both. And I think for a guy like Sean Payton, who emerges, who separates themselves in this category to me, I can't wait to break that down. Yeah, we've got lots of guys to talk about there. And we've obviously got uh, a lot of question marks. Like you mentioned, players like Henry Bird coming out of college, playing tackle in college, transitioning to guard in the NFL. That's going to be fascinating to watch as well because – the guys that we talked about in the tackle episode, those guys could slide around and have to, you know, maybe you've got to try your hand at playing some center. Or And I, I can't help but wonder, is there maybe one backup spot behind Lloyd Cushenberry or behind whoever ends up as the starter? And what does that guy have to be able to do? Like if Cushenberry doesn't win that job, is he out of a job in Denver? Like that's going to be we don't know exactly how wide open it is, and we've got plenty of competition on the interior, despite it seeming like at least two of these three spots are really nailed down. So we've got lots to talk about here in terms of roster battles, in terms of positioning and jockeying. If there are only eight positions, it's going to heat up here as the pads go on. Well, and there are two guys on the roster that played multiple positions there at the college level in the Pac-12. I mean, we look at Luke Wattenberg. He's played, if I'm not mistaken, he's played tackle. He's played guard. He's also played center. You look at Alex Forsyth, has played tackle, has played guard, has played center. So there is a little bit of a formula we're starting to see, not only just from George Payton, maybe even Sean Payton from the Broncos pro personnel department, their scouting department, what they're looking at for guys, because you have to be able to do that. Unless you are coming out of college and you are an absolute mauler at center, or you're a mauler at guard, or you're just a, a blue chip offensive tackle, which I think everyone's always talking about tackle. But Sarah, you know how hard it is to find guys like that? In today's NFL, how it's played with how big and how fast and athletic some of these edge rushers are, it is a true challenge when you talk about NFL draft and prospects. But, you know, Denver also has not been in a position to take a top tier guy like that in the last couple of seasons as well, considering their draft capital. So we'll see how it all plays out. But there are some interior offensive line position battles that if you're attending Broncos camp this week, or you're going to pay attention all throughout training camp in the preseason. We're going to tell you which position battles you need to keep your eye on. You're going to get that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Last year, I utilized BetterHelp just so I could prioritize not only just my career, business, relationship, family, all this stuff, it's a lot to process. It's a lot to do when you're constantly on the road. And BetterHelp helped me find my confidence. And therapy, it's super easy with BetterHelp. When I utilized them, it was easy to sign up. I got matched with a therapist. And then if I didn't vibe with my therapist at all, they make it to where you can change therapists easily at no extra charge. So that's why I recommend BetterHelp here today. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Well, as we look at the roster battles on the Denver Broncos interior offensive line, which players are locks to make this roster? Which players are maybe fighting for positioning? Which guys could compete to play multiple positions? And 
who's ultimately going to make the roster. We're going to talk about that, but before we do, from Cody and I, we just want to say thank you to all of you that make Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. And for you every dayers out there who subscribe to the podcast or subscribe to us on YouTube and watch us there as well, thank you. A huge shout out to all of you, every single one of you who engage with us and who make the show what it is it's a community it's a family broncos country we we love to get to do this and we're excited for the pads to come on we're excited for the team to actually start practicing so if you have any friends that love the broncos tell them about locked on broncos and tell them that they can subscribe free anywhere and everywhere that they listen to podcasts as well we appreciate you for doing that and Cody, this interior offensive line battle, it's going to be one of those that maybe doesn't generate a ton of headlines. Obviously, at training camp, everybody likes to kind of their eyes are drawn to positions like wide receiver, defensive back, maybe even the pass rush. But the interior offensive line has to step up in a big way for the Broncos this year. Obviously, the team gave up 60 some odd sacks last season. And I think to me, this was the weakest area of the roster a lot of people kind of they blame the tackle position a lot of times for sacks allowed but to me it was pressure on the interior coming in and wrecking games for the broncos last year this this unit i, I don't know there's a couple of roster locks but do you see the current projected starting three all as roster locks going into training camp I mean, in my opinion, I do. I think that the vibe and what I've seen throughout OTAs and minicamp have suggested, hey, Lloyd Cushenberry is the starter. Even Sean Payton said back at the, I think it was the NFL annual league meeting, is that, that with the additions they made in free agency with the, you know, Mike McGlinchey, Ben Powers, they believe that Cushenberry is a starter here on the offensive line. And look, this is going to be his year to prove it. So I would say, yeah, I feel like Cush is a roster lock. I'd be shocked if there was really any competition for his spot Based on what I've seen so far, but then again, training camp opens up a lot of doors. When the pads come on, it gives you a little bit of a different evaluation. I think Ben Powers and obviously Quinn Miners, these are safe roster locks when you talk about the interior of the offensive line. Really, a lot of the competition, I know a lot of people are going to focus on Lloyd Cushenberry, the center position. I think that there are a multitude of, of names to watch and battles that are going to be ongoing that Broncos fans need to keep their eye on. And, and in my opinion here, I think a lot of it at the center position. I think we are going to see competition between Alex Forsyth and Luke Wattenberg, mainly for that position. I'll throw Kyle Fuller's name in there because he's kind of a guard center hybrid. But then at guard, I'm also going to look at it as, okay, you're going to see Will Sherman taking on Henry Burr, taking on Kyle Fuller in this department as well. And the reason I mentioned Kyle Fuller, folks, he was in at the offensive guard spot a lot during mandatory minicamp and OTAs. He was getting a lot of work there, more so than he was center. So I think that's something that Broncos fans need to keep an eye on here. And, you know, we talked about him in the previous segment here, some potential sleepers, hybrid guys. How does maybe a, a guy like Quinn Bailey factor into the equation in any of these competitions? I think it's absolutely important that we keep an eye on all this. And hey, even Cam Fleming could be projected to be a little bit more of a guard here in Sean Payton's system. So how do these things all pan out? I mean, I'm curious for your thoughts, Sarah, and obviously Broncos countries you're watching as you're listening. Make sure you chime in on social media at Cody Work NFL at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos, or in the YouTube comments, let us know what you think. But Sarah, what are your thoughts? What position battles do you have your eye on? Do you see something different than maybe I do? I'm going to be fascinated to see if anybody else rotates in as the starting center, right? I think there's some fans out there that believe Alex Forsyth can win that job as a seventh-round pick. And hey, I mean, I guess anything is possible at this stage until we see definitively. But I, I agree with you, Cody. I think that is Lloyd Cushenberry's job. I do view him as a lock at this point, unless the Broncos go out there and make some, you know, Ben Jones type of move, or if they trade for a center or something like that, which all options I think remain on the table as of the time that we're recording this. So I'm not writing anything off, but I do think if, if everything stays the way that it is, the roster that that is, I don't think Lloyd Cushenberry's job is going to be threatened by Alex Forsyth barring injury. So we'll kind of see what happens there. I can't help but wonder, are, are Kyle Fuller and Alex Forsyth fighting for one job, right? That, that's what I'm wondering there because I hope my hope is that you can keep it as homegrown as possible. And of course, you want all the best players. But as somebody that really loves the team building aspect of of football whether it's the broncos or anyone else but especially the broncos you want to see the guys that you draft 
develop in your system and you want to see them become assets, whether it is as a starter or as a backup or somebody who rotates, maybe somebody that can come in as a sixth offensive lineman at times, right? So you want to see guys like Alex Forsyth and Luke Wattenberg turn out to be something, but you also wouldn't mind if somebody that another team drafted like Will Sherman, could he come in and develop under Zach Streif and in Sean Payton's offense? Like that is almost just as good. It's kind of like the difference between a uh, Matt Paradis kind of story and a Brandon Marshall kind of story where, yeah, the Broncos didn't draft Brandon Marshall, but he really developed in their defense, in their system. Can you get guys like that on the offensive line? That's what we're looking for at this time of year. Just positive development one way or another. You, The last thing that I want, and I think that anyone wants, is to say at the end of the day, whether you got eight, nine, ten offensive linemen, that you feel stuck with any one of those guys or that you just feel like we had to keep them because we need bodies. You want to you want this decision to be a really, really hard one. I agree with you. And look, I also keep going back when we do these position previews for training camp and looking at maybe how it impacts the preseason. I can't help but go back to Sean Payton's comments that he has made about it doesn't matter where you're selected, whether you're undrafted, whether you are drafted, that though know, there's been times where they drafted a guy and they cut him in that same exact preseason or training camp just simply because it didn't translate. It wasn't going well and somebody else was playing better. Like, this, I think, is maybe some of the pressure that Alex Forsyth will be facing here as we approach Broncos camp is, can he hold off some of these other guys that are competing for that spot? You know, even though he was drafted, we now know in today's NFL, I mean, heck, last year, look at it. I mean, the Broncos have had guys that they've drafted around seven that they have gotten rid of, that they have cut and moved on from. I mean, even Fayon Hicks was a guy who they drafted around seven last year. They cut him. They obviously brought him back to the practice squad. He's also on the training camp roster this year, but it just goes to show that, hey, if it's not working out, they need their best players when they construct that 53-man roster because the rules are a little bit different. I also think this bodes well to the benefit of player evaluation is that Denver, they can still cut guys after you know week to week, but really you don't have to cut from 90 to 53 until after that third and final preseason game. So do the Broncos take advantage of that? To me is another question mark that I have as we get ready to analyze the preseason, which just in a couple weeks, Sarah, things are going to be – Active here is the Broncos have the first preseason game against the Arizona Cardinals. And one thing is for certain, every practice that the Broncos have, you can get recap and reaction afterward here on the Lockdown Broncos YouTube page and also wherever you get your podcast. We'll have you covered every step of the way here, Broncos country. But let us know some position battles you're identifying on the interior offensive line. Do you believe Lloyd Cushenberry is safe? He's a roster lock, or do you think that there is legitimate competition to push him for his job? We're always eager for your thoughts, Broncos country. But our conversation will continue on today's episode of the show as we take a look and we're going to give our projections who we think will make up the Broncos interior offensive line at center and at guard going into the regular season. We'll share our thoughts with you and everybody else in Broncos country on today's episode of the show. This episode of Locked On Broncos, real quick, let me tell you about the Locked On NFL podcast. You can get the biggest stories from the local experts all around the NFL. Training camp for some other teams has already started. Some teams got an early jump like the New York Jets. The Kansas City Chiefs, they've gotten a roll on things. What are go what's going on? What are some of the biggest headlines around there, including Chris Jones not reporting for training camp for the Chiefs? Well, if you're a big NFL guy like many of us here, check out the Locked On NFL podcast for your second listen of the day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts or on YouTube. As we get ready to project the Broncos' interior offensive line ahead of this upcoming season, we're just grateful for you and everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. Just a friendly reminder, we'll have you covered every single day of training camp, anytime that there's a preseason game, every single day all year long. Lockdown Broncos should be your go-to for all your Broncos news, content, coverage, and more. Thank you so much, Broncos country. Sarah, I'm going to leave the floor to you, my friend, as we open things up here, projecting the interior of the offensive line. When you take a look at the guard position, when you take a look at center, including starters, including depth, how do you see it playing out? How many guys do you think they're going to keep? And who are those guys that you have your eye on that you think are going to make it to the 53-man roster? Well, we did our tackle episode. I projected three tackles, right? I projected Bulls, McGlinchey, and Cam Fleming. And with Cam Fleming's flexibility to play on the interior, I'm going to be keeping, obviously, five interior linemen. I'm going to try to stick with what Sean Payton has typically done. So that'll that'll give us eight interior eight offensive linemen overall, five interior, three tackles, 
I'm obviously going to go Ben Powers, Quinn Miners at the guard positions, Lloyd Cushenberry at center. And then, like I said, I like to keep it homegrown as much as possible. So I'm going with Luke Wattenberg and Alex Forsythe as the additional depth there. I think that gives you options at center. I think it gives you options at tackle with Cam Fleming being kind of lumped in there. It gives you options at guard. Like, like you said, Luke Wattenberg, he can play some guard. Cam Fleming, he can play some guard. Forsythe, and those guys have tackle flexibility as well. And Luke Wattenberg, it should be noted, he does have the physical attributes to play outside at the tackle position. A lot of times guys who play tackle at college, they have to kind of move to the interior because they don't have the length or foot quickness to be able to hang on the outside. But Luke Wattenberg was one of those guys. He scored very, very high on the RAS scale, one of those RAS holes for the Broncos, you know? So uh, he's he's somebody that can really play a variety of positions. And I'm banking on Zach Streif getting the most out of these guys after we, we kind of saw a little bit of a cluster last year with Butch Berry coaching the O-line. I kind of feel better about the group that's in charge going forward. I'm very curious to see how it all plays out. I think coaching will be better on the offensive line, but if I had to go through my roster projection here, we talked about the overarching theme of how they have to be better on the interior because that was where a lot of things kind of came through negatively for them last season. And I think Lloyd Cushenberry, having two really good guards, having consistency at the guard position, I think certainly will help him because you can maybe make the argument a lot of the struggles the Broncos have had have been miscommunication errors between the left guard and the center or the right guard and the center. And it just makes everything look bad across the entire operation. So for Zach Streif coming in, it's getting these guys all on the same page. And for Sean Payton, making sure that they can execute properly on the offensive side of the ball. And, and look, it's going to be a climb. It's going to take time. And I think that once training camp comes out and fans are in attendance, it's going to be a work in progress. It's not going to look perfect right away. And I think we absolutely have to highlight that here on the show. There might be days where the defense comes out and looks like they're dominating. There could be another day where the offense comes out and rebounds. You can't read too much into what happens in these training camp practices unless there's something major and drastic like an injury Aside from that, these guys are going to be thrown on the pads for the first time since playing last year. There's an acclimation period that takes time there. So with that said, Lloyd Cushenberry at center alongside Alex Forsyth is my projection. So two guys at the center position. At guard, I'm going to go with Quinn Miners, Ben Powers, and Kyle Fuller because of his ability to play guard and being able to play center as well. And then you factor in mentioning even the offensive tackle position. Cam Fleming is going to be one of those other guys that has the ability to play tackle guard. So Denver has positional flex versatility all across the entire board to me i think that will make a very good nucleus that you can try to build with granted there's not a lot of experience in terms of some of these guys like kyle fuller doesn't have a lot of nfl regular season experience but i'm curious to see how everything goes when you're actually playing against another team you, you know your first two games are going to be on the road you're going to have joint training camp practices in denver against the rams before taking them on and then everything gets real and then Really, a lot of it, if these guys that we're talking about here that we project to make the active roster continue to stand out, then I think the next thing that we're going to focus on is who are the guys that are ideal practice squad candidates on the offensive line, whether interior, whether at, you know on the outside. To me, that's another thing to watch, but that's kind of my projection here for how the offensive line on the interior is going to look for me. Yeah, so now the question th that I would say builds off that is really, do the Broncos look to add anybody? Uh, teams aren't really looking to get rid of good offensive linemen. Let's just put it that way. But I think Sean Payton is one of those guys that we can bank on him being pretty active. And I think if the Broncos are convicted about somebody that they see the pro scouting departments, like, Hey, let's, let's take a look at maybe, you know, swinging a draft pick for this guy, or maybe, you know, asking about the availability of this guy. I think he will be aggressive in that regard. That was one thing that in new Orleans, he was willing to do that quite often if he didn't like a starter at a certain position on the offensive line, he was willing to make the trade for somebody like Max Unger. Remember those? So so there's there's times like that that you just got to be on the lookout. If there is somebody out there, I know uh, Connor Williams for the Miami Dolphins, a little unsettled in his situation. He could play some center. And there's other guys that are out there. So I'm just going to be fascinated to see. The, is the offensive line that we see today, the, the top eight guys, that we project, even if there's a you know a Luke Wattenberg versus Kyle Fuller type of situation, is there an opening for Sean Payton and George Payton, the general manager, to go out there and try to upgrade via trade 
one of these positions that is always a possibility especially if the price is right and you know that's just kind of these guys mo sean payton and george payton they love to make trades throughout their history they've done it a lot and so i think that's something that we need to be watching for at this particular position group and I even think after the first preseason game or going into the second one, we could see some action. I mean, we saw it with George Payton and Trinity Benson, who was the preseason darling, and then they trade him for draft capital. I remember when everything like that panned out. You and I were sitting here talking about like, yeah, well, you know, what, what's the plan there considering where Denver is at from a capital standpoint? We know George Payton likes to add it. We know Sean Payton likes to have draft picks as well, but he also likes to trade them. So it's more ammunition to be able to maneuver some trades if they were to do that going into next season. There's so many things in play here for the Broncos, but one thing is for certain Broncos country camp will officially kick off on Friday at the Centura Health Training Center, 10 o'clock a.m. Just a reminder, if you have your tickets through Ticketmaster and you can't make it, they have ways where you can return your ticket, and that way it opens up opportunities for fans who can't who, who want to attend. If you can't make it, that way they can grab a ticket and attend. Make sure you check that out. There will be 3,000 of you in attendance, and if you're available before practice even begins, shoot me a, a message or a mention on Twitter, at Cody Work NFL, or on threads. I'm on threads. Sarah, we got to get him on the train as well. We know Twitter is re Branding here very, very soon. We'll see what that looks like. But overall, would love to come and say hi to everybody that listens to the show if you are going to be in training camp attendance at all throughout the portion of everything leading up to the regular season. But with that said, that'll wrap up today's episode. Lockdown Broncos, thank you once again for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. Shout out to all the everydayers. And for all you everydayers, tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Broncos will be our final training camp position preview as we focus on the interior defensive line we have a new update on mike purcell in terms of where he's going to be starting things off in training camp on the non-football injury list how does that impact the defensive line the optics of that well we'll dive deep into that in tomorrow's brand new episode locked on broncos